What's up, guys? Humphrey here. So the headline in Monday's Wall Street Journal is that U.S. stocks are sliding amid Chinese property fears. We're also seeing the crypto market selling off this week as well. Now, there are many reasons for this sell-off, including uncertainty around an upcoming Fed meeting. But the main catalyst seems to be Evergrande, which has been likened by analysts to the Lehman Brothers of 2008. So what is Evergrande? What is going on with Evergrande lately? And why should we care about it? And what should we do if the market continues to sell off? So Evergrande is a Chinese real estate development company that is the second largest property developer by sales. It is also currently unable to repay its debts and is now known as the world's most indebted developer, sitting on over $300 billion worth of liabilities, according to Bloomberg. Now, because of this, their stock price has nearly plummeted over 80% in the past year with upwards of 10% losses in a single day, and ratings agencies have downgraded Evergrande and their own bonds are dropping to record lows. According to the New York Times, for more than two decades, Evergrande was China's largest developer, minting money from a property boom on a scale that the world had never seen. With each success, Evergrande expanded into new areas, for example, bottled water, professional sports, electric vehicles, and even theme parks I was reading. It employs over 200,000 employees across 1,300 real estate properties across China, and lately has been reported to not be able to even pay its own employees causing a lot of social unrest in the country. This article even states that the Evergrande debt problem was so bad that it even asked its own employees to loan them cash earlier this year or risk losing their bonus. They were basically doing anything to fund their debt problem at this point. Not only that, Evergrande is on the hook to home buyers for over 1.6 million apartments that are yet to be completed, meaning that these 1.6 million people that have put down payments on homes that are going to be completed later on might not even see those houses. So why is this all happening now or why is it all happening today? Well, actually, it's been going on for quite a while, but Evergrande has been taking on a lot of debt in order to grow at a fast pace. That's something that's not really that uncommon in our Western culture. We take on debts to grow businesses, to buy houses, to finance cars, etc. They took on so much debt and this is usually fine if you expect your profits and your revenues to grow since you'll be able to make payments on that debt but the problem is is that their sales have been steadily dropping since june and that's not really a secret either i mean they've been publicly saying that hey we're expecting lower sales in the coming months especially in september where they expect even lower sales so evergrande is in a lot of debt so much so that it even told the government which they in turn told the banks that evergrande won't be able to pay their interest payments that they owe on this debt now this article was written last week so the interest payments that are due are due today and on thursday of this coming week the 23rd another 84 million dollars worth of interest payments are due, which we're not too sure if they're going to pay or not. So combining decreasing revenue with a lack of liquidity, along with having multiple lines of businesses like the electrical vehicle business I was talking about earlier, they're now starting not to be able to even pay some of their contractors and their builders. Not only that, they're having a hard time selling their own businesses and are even trying to list their existing buildings for sale, which aren't able to be sold in a timely fashion to provide them with the cash that they need. This has a really dangerous domino effect because employees aren't getting paid and the home buyers have money deposited with Evergrande have no finished product. Suppliers and contractors aren't being paid as well, and banks aren't getting interest payments on the debt that they've loaned to Evergrande. The gist is that Evergrande has too much debt, too many lines of businesses to service, and not enough cash coming in, or at least not enough cash coming in as quickly as they would like. A simple analogy here is that it's almost like if you borrow $200 from your friend and you're expecting to sell your Xbox to cover that debt. But the problem is you're listing your Xbox everywhere, like Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, and no one really wants to buy your Xbox. Meanwhile, your friend is now demanding for the money as soon as possible, and well, guess what? You don't really have it. Now, just take that Xbox analogy and like multiply it by a million times bigger and a million times more intertwined with the global economy, and that's basically what we have with Evergrande. So what does this actually mean for us in the US stock market, or maybe if you're watching in Canada or the UK or Australia, what does it mean for you? So Evergrande is a stock that's held among many mutual funds and pension funds, and thankfully the percentage stake is pretty small across the board, at least in the United States. So that means while you don't have zero exposure to Evergrande in your own stock portfolio, chances are that if you own the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index or the Emerging Markets Fund, you're exposed to Evergrande at least slightly, and I do mean very slightly, in Vanguard's Emerging Market Fund, the stake of Evergrande is 0.25%. Now that's the largest in any mutual fund that I could find online. So luckily index funds are well diversified. So even if Evergrande completely goes under, it's not like that entire investment is screwed over. The more threatening piece of the Evergrande situation is the rippling impact that it could have on the global economy. And that's what we need to really be watching out for. And a lot of what's gonna happen to Evergrande is dependent on what the Chinese government is going to do and how they're going to address the issue. Earlier I said that in the West, we're used to taking on debt 
and leverage to buy things like homes, cars, and start businesses. Well, I can tell you that growing up with Chinese culture, having too much debt is typically frowned upon. It's not the most responsible thing to do from a cultural point of view. I'm just talking about this from my experience here, so take this with a grain of salt. China has also recently wanted to strive away from having too many companies that take on too much debt AKA being over leveraged. It wouldn't surprise me if the government made an example of Evergrande and just showed their people like, hey, this is what happens when you take on too much debt. There's another situation at play, which is, you know, they might view a bailout as too similar to what the United States did back in 2008, and they don't really wanna be associated with what the United States does. Now, I don't really know guys, it's just speculation on my end, but there's also been mixed opinions from analysts and banks as well. Some are citing that the government will bail out Evergrande and others are sharing the opinion that China won't bail them out. If Evergrande does default, AKA China doesn't bail them out, then there is a risk of what's called the contagion risk. That's where the threat of their default would spill over into other real estate developers in China, along with the housing prices and the housing market in China. And when a huge company like this fails, it affects not only the sector that the company is in, but the banking sector, the bond sector, the remaining local economy, and then finally the global economy. But what has China done in the past? According to this article from readers, a strategist from RBC has said that in the past, the Chinese government has been known to do its best to avoid contagion. Beijing has demonstrated in recent years that it's fully able and willing to step in to stem widespread contagion when major financial or corporate institutions fail. Other analysts don't think that there's gonna be some sort of widespread systemic risk for the global economy, but clearly the markets are overreactionary and there doesn't need to be systemic risk for the markets to react in a way where they're affected. After seeing how the US stock market performed on Monday with the Dow Jones down 600 points and the S&P 500 down 75 points or 1.7%, I think Thursday will actually be more telling since that's when Evergrande will owe more money in interest payments that day. And if they don't pay those on Thursday in China, that means our market on Thursday could be affected. Maybe more selling off amidst fears of collapse or implosion. Evergrande also has another $47.5 million interest payment due on September 29th for its March 2024 bonds. So the saga is clearly far from over. Now, side note, this is something that's kind of interesting to me is that September is historically a bad month for stocks in general. The S&P 500 usually averages down a 0.56% decline in September each year since 1945, while contrastly, April's average has a 1.71% gain. So what should you do in a sell-off from an investing perspective? Well, as always, I believe that time in the market beats timing the market. So if you're invested in the long term, you should probably just do nothing. I know that sounds kind of weird, but nothing about good investing typically feels good. It's usually counterintuitive. If you panic sell your long-term investments now, you could be risking losing out on gains if and when the market rebounds. Now, if you do have some short-term holdings in like a play portfolio that are profitable or perhaps break even, now might be a decent time to sell some of those holdings and have cash sitting on the sidelines for an opportunity to buy back in if you anticipate stocks going even lower so that you can pick up some of those positions at a discount. However, I will say that buying the dip is pretty hard to identify because we never really know where the true dip is. The safest way to invest when the market is going down or it's going up is just to dollar cost average over a period of time. The situation with Evergrande is constantly developing and evolving, so we'll definitely know more as time goes on. I'm gonna start making more videos on current events and the markets. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more videos from me. I'll actually be in Austin this week for FinCon, so I may not be uploading as much, but I hope you have a good day and enjoy.